Shalom, this is Reb Yosef coming to you from Jerusalem. This week is Parshas Balak, and it contains a number of um, topics, a uh, prediction of the um, Shiach. Uh, it starts with uh, the king of uh, Moab, Balak, uh, seeing um, Israel after they have defeated uh, Sihon and Og, the two Amorite kings. And it says two things about Moab's reaction. One is that they uh, feared Israel, uh, Vayagar, they were pressured, and Vayakutsu, and they were disgusted with them. And uh, because of that, essentially what they wanted to do was go go to war against Israel. They didn't have the military means to do so, but um, it was they pursued warfare by other means. Um, the first thing that is often looked at is the fact that they were afraid of Israel because of their strength, that they had just basically easily defeated two very powerful kings, uh, specifically uh, kings that uh, had been hired to defend the Canaanites, uh, and they had totally destroyed them. Uh, so it lends itself to saying that they were simply uh, afraid of Israel simply because they were very powerful. Um, that is not the entire situation, uh, because it also says that they were disgusted with them. Um, the idea of disgusted um, is discussed in the commentaries. It's uh, Vayakutsu, uh, where it talks about Egypt being disgusted with Israel, or Rivka Imeno being disgusted with the daughters of Canaan, uh, that uh, who were the wives of um, uh, of Aesop. Um, the idea is that uh, there was a serious conflict in values, and what you have here is a theme of uh, Tahara, purity, versus the theme of Tame, where Israel is pure, uh, that even though they may wander from the, the, the path quite a bit, nevertheless, the, 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 the essence of Israel remains pure, and that's what is... Uh, eventually going to prevail. And because they are powerful, it means that they're going to have an influence. Uh, in the case of Moab, they are the opposite. Uh, when they are sexually impure and religiously impure. And one of the points of the, the uh, Chumash is that they go hand in hand, both of them. Uh, where uh, the Chumash uh, rebukes Israel, saying that they shouldn't take foreign wives because they will lead your uh, children to idolatry. Uh, you also have uh, in a lot of the Arias, the forbidden relationships, goes through a long list of them, and in the, in the middle of them, towards the end, is not to uh, pass your children through fire to Molech. Uh, an idolatrous uh, ceremony. Uh, and people say, well, what, what does Molech and the Vodazara have to do with this? Uh, the unifying factor is that it's one form of Tame, Tuma, leading to another one that is much worse. The um, Chumash in the uh, giving of the Ten Commandments mentions that HaKadosh Baruch who offered the Ten Commandments to other nations, among them Amnon and Moab, and the other nations said, um, what's in it? And in the case of Moab, they said, do not commit adultery. And Moab refused the Ten Commandments based on that, saying that uh, for them, um, obscenity is a way of life. 
So what you have is a conflict between the uh, pure and the impure. And it manifests itself in different ways. Uh, in the case of Moab, they are disgusted with Israel. That's the one of the uh, common understandings of the, uh, the, the Pasuk. In the case of Rivka, she is disgusted with the daughters of Canaan. The idea in that is, okay, on one hand, uh, the commentaries say that one of the reasons that uh, Yitzchak became blind was because they were burning incense to Avodah Zarah. They had a, an idolatrous atmosphere. The commentaries also say basically in one form or another that they were adulteresses. Uh, so you're, you're talking about Tahara hating Tuma. Uh, the other one is that uh, one side is put on the defensive. Uh, the word Vayakutsu, uh, it's grammatically uh, similar to the word kutz, that uh, a thorn, uh, saying that they're uh, thorns in our eyes, uh, eyesores. Uh, uh, that, that's the idea of being disgusted, but it's also that you may feel like a thorn. Uh, the, um, the commentaries talk about um, Moab, I uh, can't remember which one, the Kliyakar or the or Hachayim, but they say, but he says that uh, Israel, he brings Psalm 80, is compared to a, um, a vineyard, a grapevine, that's planted in a field that uh, HaKadosh Baruch Hu clears the field. And what does he clear the field of? Thorns. So this grapevine can, um, can, can expand and to grow. In that when... Um, when Moab said they were vayukutsu, they were disgusted with Israel, it meant that they felt like thorns. In other words, they were put on the defensive about their own tuma. So what you have then basically is um, the conflict. What Moab does is um, on the advice of Bilaam, also with the help of Midian, uh, they basically um, prostitute their women. They say seduce the Israelite men first physically and then invite them to the... Um, what about to the sacrificial dinners of their god? Their god is what they call the Baal Peor, uh, literally uh, the master of defecation, where its service was to defecate on the idol or in front of the idol. The, the idea is a uh, graphic show of contempt for religion. That's the idea. And their plot, to a certain extent, succeeds a um, uh, a a, uh, a, a plague breaks out among the uh, B'nai Yisrael, 24,000 people are killed. It's basically stopped when um, Pinchas, uh, the grandson of Aaron, basically kills uh, uh, a prince of Israel, of Shimon, who took a Midianite princess, uh, as a as a lover, um, and with that, the uh, God's anger is assuaged. That that's the basic idea. But the what you're talking about is a world that is largely tame, but a light that is shining into it of uh, purity, and the light constantly grows stronger and larger. And what happens 
is uh, in the end of days, okay, uh, the prophet Zechariah prophecies, it will be that day, declares the Lord of hosts, that I will cut off the name of the miserables, uh, a derogatory way of referring to idols, from the world, and their names will be ne- no Lord mentioned, nor their prophets. And the spirit of a tomb of defilement I will p- cause to pass from the world. In other words, in the messianic days, the attraction towards tumma will really not exist, or at least not be so significant, in that peoples uh, will simply wish to be good and wish to be pure. Thank you. Shabbat Shalom.